Word association improvisations. This is a method I use for actors to find improvisational techniques that a zany, a low status, must have to win their audience. So it's good to make use of this as a warm up games in the early stages while still learning about zany. The objectives are to improvise freely, handle heckling and work as a team successfully. These are to be done without masks. The first part is probably familiar. It's designed to help drama students speak before they think. In other words, we're trying to get them not to filter the words that they say, but rather to say the first thing that comes to their mind. This training is useful in allowing the actress to feel that whatever they say when they are improvising is right and it's okay. Now, direct all students to get into the groups of four and to stand in a square, or if you've got three, stand in a triangle. Have one of the students start by saying a word. It can be anything, orange, car, house, any word that they want to say. Next, somebody else in the group says whatever word came to mind and association with the first person's word. It does not have to be the, uh, have not be related, just has to be a word that was inspired from the last word that they heard. A short example session might start like this. Orange, round, sun, dial, clock, watch. Now the game continues like this. It's better if they do not take turns in an organized fashion. That is, each taking a turn one at a time in a, say, in a clockwise direction. Instead, I encourage whoever is inspired to say the next word to just say the word. They just jump in. Perhaps there are three actors and two of them are quickly firing words backwards and forth while the third student is standing there just left out looking at what the other ones. What happens is that they, they feel that they say, I don't want to miss out on this and so they jump in. This only happens for a moment as as soon as they realize that they've been left out behind, they'll jump in quickly because they'll, they'll be anxious not to, not to be left out, not to fail. This exercise trains actors for working in larger groups. It helps them to get over the natural tendency to wait your turn. After they've played it for a while, I ask them to discuss the game and instruct the other students to thank the people they've been working with and disband the groups and direct them to find some space in the room where they can stand by themselves. They'll each need enough room to throw their arms about without hitting somebody else nearby as I ask them to rehearse. Word Association Impro Part 2. This essentially is solo word association exercise. The goal is to get them to rehearse using their body as well as their voices. Taking a word that they are saying and making it uh, sound nonsensical, if you say a word enough times over and over again, it starts to sound like nonsense. Instruct students to pick a word from the previous game, ask them to physically express the word with movement, gesture, dance, turn or a swirl. We are asking the actor to engage in spontaneous movement and speech. The movement being an expression of the sound that they are making. I ask the class to close their eyes whilst doing this exercise. It's, it's, um, it's to be hoped that you'll have enough space in the room that they won't be bashing into each other. But closing the eyes lets them loose from their inhibitions and I find that their movements get much more expansive. You may find a large movement warm-up exercise useful before this. After they've done a, a bit of experimenting by themselves with their eyes closed, ask them to continue but with their eyes open and next ask them to get back into their word association groups and play the same game as before in part one. But with movement, encourage the groups to uh, move around the room traveling as a group. In the last part, I encourage the students to continue working in the same groups because they've you know, been starting to build a rapport with each other. Direct them to sit in their small groups and ask them to think of one or two lines. It could be a line or two from poetry, a song, or a famous quote from a play or something. To be or not to be, that is the question. Or wherefore art thou, Romeo? Mary had a little lamb, so on. The point is, for the group to think of something that the four or three of them know. And uh, you want them to rehearse, not something that they'll have to worry about learning lines for. So just to throw away a couple of lines. Since you've given no explanation, they'll be wondering what's going to happen. The result is that majority of the groups will choose a nursery rhyme, which are less challenging than, say, Shakespeare. But it 
it takes a while, but once they've had some time to discuss it, put the pressure on by saying, okay, who has already got something, you know, uh, ask a group, perhaps a group announces that they've chosen Mary Had a Little Lamb, respond with fantastic, because, you know, you, you don't have to be clever or sophisticated. We don't care what the lines are, because this helps the other groups push themselves into making a decision of what they're going to choose. Now, whatever line they choose, it's perfect because they're going to turn it into nonsense anyway. When everyone has a line, ask them to stand up and say goodbye to their group uh, that they've just been working with. They have to practice movement and, and uh, the sound in a word association part two section here where they'll come back together again as before. They will need to find enough space to be able to swing their arms and not hit into somebody. Announce that now they'll be rehearsing those lines. The, the students are to explore each word individually as though it's out of its context. For example, if the line was, Mary had a little lamb, the student would start with the first word, Mary. She would say, Mary, Mary, uh, and so on, and uh, while, whilst doing the movements to these different ways of saying the word. When the student feels that they have sufficiently explored the first word, they will then move on to the second word, had. I might point out that had as a hard, quick, staccato sound of sound and ask them to the, what movement might go with that sound. This portion of the exercise isn't really word association, but it's rather individual words in a particular order. The, the class wonders where this is going, and you can explain that it's associated with Commedia Dilla, and that they are training in a precise step-by-step -step process, which leads to the development of exceptional improvisational skills. After they've had some rehearsal time by themselves, bring them back to their original groups. It isn't necessary for every student to have explored every word of their lines before you send them back to their groups. But tell them that they are going to play the same word association game, but this time they'll be using only the words that they've chosen. They'll begin by improvising with the first word in the line. Any group member can say it at any, any time. They spontaneously say the word in its different forms, like Mary, Mary, until one of the actors feels like it's time to move on to the next word in the line, Mary had. And when one of the students says the second word, the whole group moves on to exploring the word had, and so on. Have them prance around the room, fanning their arms, dancing to each word and working together as a team. I say, pick up on the sounds that the other people are using. Uh, mimic them. Work as a team. Complement them by copying them or go to the opposite direction if somebody is doing a big, broad, go to a short, small. And this will work as a team. So once you've got the students improvising freely, exploring the sounds of a word, making them nonsensical, and just doing movement with their sounds, you're finding that now you've got a, a small team that's picking up off each other as far as uh, complementing by copying someone who's repeating a sound and moving it around on space or whatever, and someone copying their movements. This is what you want to get to. Now here comes the final part of this improvisation. What I do now is that once they've all had a go at rehearsing this and that they're showing each other that you know, they're all doing these silly movements and silly sounds, is that then you put it into a context. So what I do is I line the first group that's going to go first uh, up against the, the wall, up against a wall, the furthest part of your drama room, and have the other students sitting in an audience position facing them and you ask the group to do a presentation as though they're in one of those nightclubs, uh, the beatnik nightclubs, where they're going to do a sound and movement presentation of Mary Had a Little Lamb, or whatever piece their, their uh, two lines were from. I ask them that they are to work together as a team. It's a very contemporary movement piece. You know, I, I sell it to them, build it up, so that their presentation is, um, uh, you know, is performed with uh, a tongue-in-cheek confidence. And I ask the audience to click instead of clapping at the end, so it's a bit of a, uh, an in-joke.
Ayy! 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 So once they do this, I say, great, okay, that's the first troop. That was the easy part. The first group up gets the easy job because the second group get, that gets up, we add a few levels of complication to their performance. Now they're to do the same thing. I line them up against the back wall. I ask them to do their sound and movement piece to their line. But I say to them that they have to upstage each other. Okay, so they go, well, how do you do that? And of course, they try to step in front of each other as they're doing their performance. Someone puts out their arms in front of somebody else's face. This is some of the things that they would do. I also say to them that sometimes upstaging is not just getting in front of somebody. Sometimes someone can go right to the back of the room, stand on a chair and pull focus, and the others have to try and steal the focus back. So once they're playing with this, I ask for the next group to get up, if you've got lots of group, lots of students in your class. Then I add another layer to uh, difficulty to their performance. I ask them to do the same thing. They line up against the back wall. They're to do a pre presentation of sound and movement. They are to upstage each other and they are to keep eye contact with the audience. Now, this is something that the commedia, the masks do, the, especially the low status servants, they love the audience. The, uh, the masks are very focused on the audience. They, the, the masks want the audience to love them. And so they're all vying for attention. And that's why I'm doing this upstaging and uh, focus and copying and teamwork. So then it starts to fall into place. And by the time you've got your last student up, uh, sorry, last student group up to perform, they've got th you know, four different la layers of complication. Um, so I usually get the first group to go up again because they got off lightly, if you understand what I mean. So they're improvising uh, sound and movement. They're working as a team. They're upstaging each other. They've got eye contact. It, it's all happening at once and they're all over each other. I do say to them they're not allowed into the audience. You draw a line. Uh, I don't let them into the audience yet. Movement. Because these guys have been watching everything now, they know what was being missing in all the other performances, that I know that they're going to do a fantastic job. Give them a clap, here they go! <laughs> What's it called? Dancing Queen. <laughs> here they go. Dancing! Dancing Queen! Dancing, dancing, dancing! Dancing! <laughs> Dancing, 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 queen. Queen, 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 queen. Okay, give him a clap. So then, once they've experienced this, you can actually say, okay, what we've learned from this is this free improvisation, uh, word, word association, um, <coughs> working together as a team, and then you actually get them to say, what if we put the comedia masks on now? And they played the same game. And then they go, ah, oh, penny drop, that's why we're doing this. And that's how the, the zanies work together when they're sort of with the audience without a high status looking after them. So um, I hope this exercise proves useful for you in your drama class. Ah, oh, you're here. <laughs> oh, very good. All right, you can start then. Ladies! Ladies! And gentlemen! Ladies and gentlemen! Ladies! Ladies and gentlemen! Yeah, 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 you said that. Come on, ladies. Welcome! Welcome! Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen! Oh, why? Ladies! <laughs> <laughs> present! 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 Welcome! Hey, hey, go! Good! No! Present! Present! Presenting! Presenting, yes, you're no. supposed to be presenting! No. Hurry up, get out of there! Ladies and gentlemen! Presenting! Um, that. <laughs> Presenting the next act. 
Yeah, no, 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 if you don't do it, you don't get a meal tonight. I've got, I've got ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies. And ladies, I want a meal. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. No, you don't get a meal until you do the job that you said you were going to do. Hurry up, Danny. Ladies, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. Presenting oh, the good. next act. Hey, beautiful. What's he doing? Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Presenting. 